Well, good morning and Merry Christmas. Let's stand together and worship our God. We're so excited that you've chosen um, to be with us today. Let's get ready to worship.
what you did 2,000 years ago sending your son. We remember and we believe. Hallelujah. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating one, and God almighty. And through your Holy Spirit, Jesus, our Savior.
Yes, we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. And praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, free in one, God of glory,
church, could we spend a minute, 60 seconds, adoring God, praising God? But hear me, church, no requests from us. Just praise to him seated high. Just 60 seconds of glorifying God, of giving him his worthy praise. 60 seconds. Worship team included, everybody in this building, 60 seconds. Don't let me pray alone. 60 seconds of just worshiping and praying God. For he alone is gods before you holy are you worthy 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 is the lamb of god who had the perfect plan the perfect will you are the alpha and the omega you are worthy of my praise god thank you for the breath in my lungs lord glorify and magnify your presence in this place today you are worthy of our praise you are worthy of our worship lord jesus we love you god worthy 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 is the lord god almighty so lord we just thank you so much for today, God. Thank you for the breath in our lungs. Thank you for the family members that we have, God, the finances that we have, God, the, the stewards, uh, a ship in our life that you have brought us, God, the leadership um, in our lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you for our church, God. Thank you for our church family, Lord Jesus. May your presence be worshiped today, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Amen. Can we give it up for the worship team? Always do a great job. Hey, would you would you do me a favor? Uh, my name is Lupe. I'm the youth and young and awesome pastor here. Would you do me a favor and go greet some new people? Let's smile in some new people's faces. Let's greet one another. Well, it's wonderful having everybody here today. You can be seated here today, and I've just got a quick little thing before we head before uh, head into our announcement video today. But of course, we're in the uh, Christmas season, and and in the Christmas season, that is the time where the most amount of gifts are given. And one of the greatest joys of giving a gift is seeing the individual you gave the gift to, seeing them utilize that gift, see them use the gift, play with the gift, wear the gift, whatever it might be. But we don't always have the opportunity to see someone use a gift we get them. Maybe you're a grandparent and all your grandchildren live out of state or far away and you, you, you get them the gifts, but you don't have the joy of seeing them play with it. Maybe something to a friend and due to distance you just don't have the opportunity to, to see them enjoy the gift. And, and you still give the gift because you know it's good to give and you want to give that gift, but part of the joy that you receive 
from giving the gift, it's missing. And can I tell you today that when we give into the kingdom of God, when we invest into the kingdom of God, we will always see the reward from it. Because when we get to heaven one day, we will experience the joys and the riches and the rewards of what we have sown on this earth. It's the principle of sowing and reaping. And in heaven, we're going to see all of the gifts that we gave and the lives that it touched. We're going to see that in heaven. There's going to be people in heaven that come up to you and say, because you gave, I'm here today. And it's an exciting thing. But can I tell you today, sometimes we don't always have to wait until heaven to see the joys of our giving. See, we're in the middle of some renovations to the church, and we're updating as much as we can, but when you invest into the church, you're able to see the fruit and the rewards of that giving right away. And I'm not just talking about new carpet or projectors or anything like that, but every single life that is touched in this church, you are a part of investing into that. Last week, there was 12 people that responded to the message. 12 people raised their hands and said, you know what, I want a new identity in Christ. Listen to me, when you give, you are a part of that. You get the joy of seeing the reward. When you invest into the church, you see lives are being touched. When you give to things like the renovation, you're like, well, what does carpet or seating areas or things like that, what does that have to do with eternity? Can I tell you, there are people out there in the cafe area or in the lobbies, they're making connections and fellowships that will last a lifetime. Friends that will be iron sharpening iron, helping each other grow, helping marriages. What you're having out there when you invest into the building is you're having new people come in, guests come in, and a Connect crew member can be like, hey, you want some free coffee here? Let's get you a cup of coffee. And they're conversating. And you have no idea what that will do to soften somebody's heart to receiving what God has in store for them here in the sanctuary. See, when you give to this church, you are experienced. You can experience the joys of that gift right away. You see, we're not always able to see when we give to kingdom builders and we're helping missionaries all over the globe. uh, Just a few things that we've done this year. $10,000 we were able to give to help our home church missionaries, Kristen and Rainier. We helped them buy a vehicle as they were new missionaries in Madagascar. You did that. This year, we sent $7,500 to help Fire Bible translate scriptures into brand new languages that have never had a Bible access. $7,500 you guys invested. $8,000 to help women and children caught in sex trafficking right here in the Houston area or across the world. Over $81,000 to missionaries who are on the front lines spreading the gospel all across the globe. Over 80 different projects and missionaries just like those listed. You had a part in investing into that. And, And for the most part, you're never going to see the rewards from that here on this earth. You're not going to see those who get a Bible for the very first time and say, I can read this because it's in my language. You're never going to see those faces. You're never going to see the faces of the women or children who are brought out of and freed from the sex slave industry. Most likely, you're never going to see those faces. Now, we still give because we know it's important, but can I tell you, we have an opportunity to invest into something that you can see the joys week in and week out. To see this church as we renovate, to invest into the growth of what God is doing here, to see lives change, eternities transformed, friendships made, marriages saved, prodigals come home. And so I encourage you today to partner with us as we're looking for, we said at the beginning of the year, or we said halfway through the year, as I introduced all the renovations that we were going to do, I said, not one penny is going to be raised for this building, for these renovations, until we take care of every single missionary and missions project that we set out to begin with at the beginning of the year. And we've completed all of those things, and so now we have an opportunity to say, you know what? We might not see what happens over in Asia or, 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 or uh, in Africa or in Europe, all the missionaries that we support, but you know what? If we give, we can see the joys of the people in the lobby. We can, every single time when we hear a hand raised, 12 people, I want a new identity with Jesus Christ. You are a part of that, and you can experience the joys of it. So I encourage you, if you head to the app or to the website and you click the Give button and you click Kingdom Builders and you say, I want to invest into what God is doing here in this church, if you write a check and you just write Kingdom Builders, 
on that, you have an opportunity to invest in what God is doing. Lives change right here in this church. We've got a few weeks left of being able to give for it to be uh, here in 2023 for those of you that are, are looking to do that with your tax stuff and everything like that. But we have an opportunity to see God work here on this earth. So why don't we pray and then check out our announcement video for the week. God, we love you. And we thank you for what you're doing, not just across this globe. Lord, I love, I love, I love to hear that every single missionary, every single missions project, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars we've been able to invest in missionaries all across the world. And now, Lord, I pray that you will help each and every one of us see the need to invest into our community, to our neighbors, to our city here in Humble and Atascacita and Kingwood and all the surrounding area. Lord God, we have an opportunity to see your work and your kingdom expanded right here in our area. Lord, stir our hearts to do what you have called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't we check out our announcements today? bro Brobecue. Hey, we got a lot of different small groups at this church, and if you go to the app uh, or the website, you can check those groups out there and get connected with it. Uh, real quick, before I begin the message uh, here, last week, last week, we casted vision for a fresh identity for our church as we move forward into the new future that God has for us. And we learned that all throughout Scripture, God has changed names. And it cha listen, change for change's sake is meaningless, but God changes names based off of the mission that he has chosen for that individual. And God has given us as a church the mission to reach a 25-mile radius for his kingdom. And so we presented the name Radius Church. And Wednesday, January 3rd at 6.45 p.m., we are going to be having a special business meeting to vote on this change. Now, as with all of our business meetings, you don't need to be a member of the church to attend. However, you do need to be a member to vote on any of the business that is going to be discussed. And so I would encourage anybody that if you've been coming and you say, you know what, I, I really feel like this church is my church. I feel comfortable here. God is doing something here. I want to be a part of it. I encourage you to uh, reach out to the church office sometime over the next few weeks and see, hey, can I start that application to become a member? Listen, membership numbers, it doesn't mean anything to us as a church, but what membership means to you is saying, you know what, I'm committed to what God is doing. I'm a part of this body. And I want to be a part of something pretty historic, 104 years of history, and God has something new for us. He wants us to become a new wineskin prepared for the new outpouring of wine that he has for us. And that begins that core thing, our identity. And so Wednesday, January 3rd at 645, uh, we will be having that special business meeting. But this week and next week, I'm going to be sharing a set of messages, and I've titled them, Don't Be Afraid. Don't be afraid. And we're going to look at different times when angels appeared to people during the Christmas story. And you're going to notice that usually the very first thing these angelic beings will say to the people is, don't be afraid. And today I want to talk to you about the fear of what God has planned for us. See, all of us, I think, in here, we want to be close enough to God to get the good stuff, right? I want to associate with God really when it benefits 
me. I want the promises of heaven. I want his blessings. But you know what? A lot of people say, I don't want to be so surrendered to God that he has total access to every area of my life. Because if I surrender to God, I mean, like, he might make me become a missionary in Africa, and I don't know if I can really do that, God. God might tell you to go marry someone, and it's like, well, what if, what if they're ugly, and, and God says, marry that person, and I, it's like, I don't, I don't know, God, what if he makes me do something that I don't enjoy? And, and we want God for all of the blessings, but we don't want to be so surrendered to God that he has every area of our life. Sometimes there's a sense of fear of if I truly follow Christ, if I truly give it all to him, what if things don't go my way? And a lot of people would say, well, you see, fear is the absence of faith. But can I tell you today that fear is faith. It's just faith in the wrong things. So you could say fear is placing your faith in the what ifs of life. Well, what if the economy falls apart? What if I lose my job? What if someone I love gets cancer? What if I never get married? And the fears of this life can go on and on and on. What if fear is placing our faith in the worst case scenarios? The what ifs of life. And because we have more faith in the what ifs of life, we don't give. We don't serve. We don't forgive. We don't give others a chance. We stay in our comfort zones because we have more faith in the what ifs than in the sovereignty of God. But the good news is, can I tell you today, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you give Jesus your everything, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So today I want to talk to you about the fear of what God might be asking us to do. And we're going to look at when an angel appears to a teenage girl named Mary. Now why is it that we are often afraid of God's plans for us? Now there could be a lot of answers to the question, but I want to give two based off of this story. The first is this, God's plans are often inconvenient. See, when God interrupts our lives, his interruptions are often very inconvenient to what we want to do in this world. And we can see this in the story of Mary in the book of Luke, chapter 1, starting in verse 26. It says, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. So we see immediately Mary is not excited about this angel visiting. She is troubled. Other version says she is disturbed. She is confused. Now let's get to the backstory of what's going on here and start thinking about what's going on in her mind, in her life. Now, we don't know for sure how old she is. Chances are she's probably around 14, 15, or 16 years old. And the reason we know this, because culture at that time is once a girl hit puberty, shortly after that, she would be promised, she would be betrothed to be married. And so if you can get inside this young girl's mind, she's probably pretty amped up about what is to come in her life. If it's modern day and she's uh, pledged to be married, what is a young bride-to-be going to be doing? Well, she's searching on Pinterest of all the creative ideas to make her wedding day the greatest and most special, unforgettable moment. She's practicing signing what her new last name is going to be, or she's naming her future children, and then all of a sudden, this angel comes and interrupts all of her plans. And it's pretty inconvenient to the way that she had her future mapped out. Now, what are we going to learn from this? Well, a very important principle we need to understand is that what we call interruptions, God often is calling invitations. See, those times that we feel, God is interrupting my life. God is changing my plans. God is doing something different than what I was 
thinking, he's often actually inviting us to something bigger, better, and greater. Think about it in Scripture. Jesus does this all the time. What did God do with Moses? He interrupts a regular day with a burning bush. And he invites Moses to become the deliverer of God's people. With Jonah, God interrupts Jonah's plans with a great big fish and led him to preach to the people of Nineveh. In the New Testament, God interrupts Saul with a light from heaven and he invites him to be the individual that writes the majority of the New Testament and an, an apostle to those who would listen to him about the grace of Jesus Christ. God interrupts our plans with an invitation to something better. And I believe that there's many of us who often shake off God's invitations because we call them interruptions. When God is really wanting to do something new and different in our lives. Maybe you feel like your life has been interrupted with a job change or a job loss. Maybe you feel your life has been interrupted by a pregnancy. Maybe you feel your life has been interrupted by a breakup. Maybe you feel as if Pastor Scott was really interrupting the service when he was talking about giving to kingdom builders, and you're like, just move on with the service. You're interrupting what I'm here for. Could it be that the interruptions in life are actually God's invitations to something great? Now, it could play out in any number of ways, and there are those of you, you know what I'm talking about. You've got your own interruption invitation stories. Some of you at one time, you were not church people. You were not religious or whatever you want to call it. And someone interrupted your plans, your life, and kept begging you to come to church. And at first you're like, no, I don't have the time. I'm not interested. And they kept bugging and bugging. And you finally surrendered and you said, okay, fine, I'll go to church. And you came thinking, I'm just going to endure it. I'm just going to get in and get out. But then something happened. You were touched by a song, by a message. Someone said something to you, and it was like God speaking directly to you, and your heart started to soften. And suddenly you found yourself being drawn to God, and one day you cried out and you asked for that forgiveness, and you sensed the supernatural presence of God, something different, something dramatically changed in, in your life. And what you thought was an interruption was an actual invitation to something way, way better. And then also next week you come to the church again and they're like, hey, there's a need. We really need some helpers. And you're like, well, I could do that, but I don't have the time for that. But you do it anyway. And all of a sudden you're signing up and you're like, why am I doing this? I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to have the time. And, and next thing you know, you're serving in the four-year-old room and it's like, you don't even like four-year-olds. <laughs> and then two months later, it has become the greatest hour of your week. Because you see that there's something special about investing into the next generation of what God wants to do in their life. And you all of a sudden are longing for it. You look forward to it. And what you thought was an interruption that you just kind of begrudgingly did turned into an invitation to God doing something really great in your life. What happened is God interrupted you. Somewhere along the way, he interrupted and he invited you to something better. And can I tell you, all of us can experience those divine invitations as long as we don't shake them off as interruptions. An angel of the Lord appeared to this girl as she had her life planned out, and he says, I've got something different for you. And what does the angel say in verse 30? He says, don't be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. Don't be afraid. You have found favor. Now, I don't know about you, but if God's got some favor to be given out, I want a little bit of that action, right? But we're going to find out, though, that favor from God isn't always what we think it's going to be. I mean, what was Mary thinking when the angel says, hey, don't be afraid. I've got favor from God. God's got favor for you. She's probably thinking, hey, God's got favor for you. So here's the honeymoon to Hawaii. Like, that's favor in my eyes. But she doesn't realize God's favor sometimes is a little different. You see, why are we often afraid of God's plans? Well, number one, his interruptions are often inconvenient. And number two is because God's purpose is often different than our plans. 
verses 31 continues, here is the favor from the Lord, you will conceive. Oh, not a honeymoon, a baby. (laughs) Not a honeymoon baby, a baby before the honeymoon. (laughs) You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, you can only imagine this teenage girl as her emotions are swinging back and forth. God interrupts her with an invitation that disrupts her plans, and he reveals his purpose to her. I mean, think about it. There must have been this moment to where she's blown away and and bewildered with humility, like, I can't believe I've been chosen for this mother of the Son of God. And then, boom, her emotions swing with reality. What are people going to say? Pregnancy out of wedlock, this is punishable by death, by stoning. But then it swings back. I've been chosen for such an incredible honor. Oh no, I, what is Joseph going to think? I mean, can you imagine that conversation? Hey, Joe. <laughs> Joey. <laughs> you, you, why don't you sit down? <laughs> Just so you know, I'm, I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Like, can you imagine how crazy this situation was? Quite the interruption to what they had planned for their life. God's purpose was way, way, way different than her plans. But just as the high heavens are higher than the earth, so God's purposes are higher than our purposes. So his plans are higher than our plans. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And I don't know how this will play out in your life, but when God interrupts you with, a, with an invitation to something else, you're going to discover that his purposes are very different than your plans. And I don't know how it will happen, but you're going to see it again and again and again that life is going to be dramatically different than what you thought it was going to be. It may be that you've dreamed for the perfect, healthy family, and then all of a sudden you found out that you're getting a child who's going to be born with special needs, and it rocks your world. Why us, God? How come not them? What did we do? And you have no idea the blessing that that child is going to be to your life, and that child is going to bring you closer to God. It's going to bring up more love in your heart than you ever dreamed of because his purposes are different than our plans. Maybe you lose a job one day and you're like, oh no, this is the worst thing ever. God, how could you let this happen? Where are you, God? How am I going to pay the bills? What are we going to do? And suddenly you have no other options and you say, well, I just got to start that business that you've always kind of had in the back of your mind. And years later, you're going to look back and say, wow, what I thought was a curse was actually a blessing to my life. It was God interrupting the status quo, the comfort zone of my life, and he was inviting me to something much better. Maybe you would say, you know what, I I really thought I was going to marry this person, or I really thought my marriage was going to last forever. They were perfect, and then that relationship went south. And you thought, well, there's no way. I'll never have a good marriage. I'll never find somebody like them. And you had no idea God was preparing another person who is indescribably better suited to serve God together with you. And you couldn't see it at the time. God's purposes are always so very different than our plans. Hear me today. Scripture tells us God has plans to bless you, plans to prosper you not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And he will every now and then move in your life in a way that we feel like is an interruption. But from his perspective, it's him inviting us to something higher and different because his purposes are usually very different than our plans. Now look at how Mary responds to the angel in verse 34. Mary asked the angel, 
But how can this happen? For I am a virgin. In other words, hey, angel, I don't really know how it all works in the angel world, but down here in the people world, (laughs) things have to happen for pregnancy to take place. In other words, it's totally impossible. It's beyond impossible. It's completely absurd. It is physically impossible for this to happen. Can I tell you, there is going to be a time, I promise, for all of you who are followers of Christ, that God is going to interrupt you with an invitation to something different. His purpose is going to be very different than your plan, and he's going to ask you to have faith and believe in him for the impossible. You're going to look at your life, you're going to look at your situation, and you're going to be like Mary and say, I don't think so, God. I really think this is impossible. God, I I don't see how you're asking me to forgive that person. After what they've done for me, God, it is impossible. God, I don't know how you're asking me to trust you and and you're asking me to be generous when I don't even have enough for myself. God, I don't know how it's possible that the more I give, the more I have. God, that math doesn't, the math ain't math in God. Tithing 10%, being generous above and beyond that to kingdom builders and somehow you say, I'm gonna have more than enough. God, it doesn't make sense. It is impossible. God, it, it, our marriage, it's, it's done. S- saving this, God, it is impossible. After what they did, it's impossible. God, how in the world could you ever reconcile the relationship with one of my children after what they said, after what I did? God, it's, it's impossible. God, there's no way you could heal that person. The doctor's already said, just prepare yourself. God, this situation is impossible. And that's what we see with Mary when she says, there's no way. Angel, it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter. And the angel answered her in verse 35. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. In other words, you're right. It's not possible through you, but through the power of God, it is possible. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And maybe you're here today for this part right here. Maybe you didn't want to come today, but someone invited you. And God is interrupting your life. Maybe you're here for just this verse, this moment right here, verse 37, for nothing will be impossible for God. That marriage that you think is impossible to to save, can I tell you, nothing is impossible for God. That forgiveness that you think could never, ever happen, nothing is impossible for God. That healing that you think there's no way it could happen, nothing is impossible for God. That financial breakthrough, nothing is impossible for God. I don't know what obstacle you're facing, but can I tell you what is impossible with man is very easily possible with God. We serve a God who is all-knowing, ever-present, and all-powerful. One spoken word, and God can intervene. She says, I see no way. This could never happen. And the angel says, nothing is impossible. Look, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I believe for all of you who are followers of Christ, there's going to come a time when something interrupts you and you think, I don't really like that. I don't know about this. I I pray that we all have our divine antennas up and ask ourselves, is this an invitation from God to something better? For God's purposes over my plans. And God may ask you to do something completely unbelievable, something that seems like you could never accomplish on your own, and the truth is on your own, you could never accomplish it, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so what I want to ask you now, very simply, what is God asking you to do, or what is God asking you to believe? 
If you're a follower of Christ, I believe with all of my heart that our God is a speaking God. He is not a distant deity way out there in the universe. He is a personal God that speaks to you and me. What is he asking you to do? What step of faith is God wanting you to take? What is he asking you to believe is possible? Maybe years of something you've just already had, you've shut the door. You've said, you know, I'm just going to move on with my life. And God is maybe bringing back to your remembrance today saying, I can do that. Start believing in me again. See, if God is asking you to take a step of faith, I encourage you to write this down. Outcome is God's responsibility. Obedience is our responsibility. Hear me today, works don't make us righteous, but a righteous person works. Outcome is up to him. Obedience is up to us. And God is going to call all of us in our own ways to take steps of faith to obey. Tell yourself again and again and again. Write it on your mirror every day when you're getting ready and you're putting your makeup on. Obedience is my responsibility. Outcome is God's responsibility. For some of you, God is going to lead you to try to restore a relationship that's gone bad, and you can think of every possible negative outcome that could happen. Hear me today, it's not up to you. The outcome is not up to you, it's up to you to be obedient. Maybe some of you, God is asking you to go back to college or change majors or change careers, and you can come up with every very logical reason why that's a bad idea. But our God does not lead us by human logic or human reason, but by supernatural vision because he already knows what the future holds. So if God is leading you to do something and we tell him no, what we're saying is, God, I don't believe that you can see the future. And we are putting God in a box. Maybe you were feeling that tug earlier to give to kingdom builders and you've been hesitant because you don't know what that means for you financially. And it's difficult to take that step to focus on his kingdom first over our kingdom second. Listen, God's word is clear on generosity, on tithing, on giving. It's up to us to be obedient to his word. It's up to him to take care of the outcome. For some of you, it may be be to reach out to that friend that you know isn't saved and, and you feel pressed to invite them to church next week for Christmas Eve service. And you might say, well, I've already tried. I've already invited. There's just no way. They're going to resist. Let God handle the outcome. You just be obedient. I encourage you to simply surrender yourself to him. Just like that teenage virgin girl did 2,000 years ago, when in God's goodness and sovereign plan, he interrupted her plans with an invitation to something different. And in her mind, she couldn't conceive how it was possible, but she had to be reminded, through God, all things are possible. And so the angel puts this opportunity in front of her, Just as I believe God is putting opportunities in your mind in front of you. How did she respond? Well, in verse 38, and I love this, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. In other words, before she said anything else, she reminds herself who she is and whose she is. I belong to the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is God, and I am called to serve him. And even though I don't understand, I can't comprehend it, I can't figure it all out, it's certainly going to cost me. It's harder than I could ever imagine. I belong to him. And because I belong to him, I can trust him with the outcome. I will simply be obedient. Can we just stand in this place today and could we all across this place just bow our heads? And I'm going to invite those of you who are on our prayer teams, if you could just make your way to the front and just be prepared to pray with some people today. But I want to ask a few questions today as our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed. And the first is a question I would like you to internally answer. The first question is this, are you willing to commit to praying for God to interrupt your life? Are you willing to pray and say, God, can you interrupt my life? Just internally say, God, yeah. God, I want you to interrupt me. 
God, I want you to work in me. God, I want you to do things inside of me. Interrupt my life. The second question I would like a response, and hear me, no one's looking around, but how many of you would raise a hand in the sight of God and say, you know what, if God interrupts my life, I will obey. If he says go, I'll go. If he says do, I'll do. If he says give, I'll give. If he says serve, I'll serve. If he says change, I'll change. How many would raise your hand and say, I will obey God's invitation when it comes? Just raise your hand across this place and say, that's me. I will obey. Hands all over this place. You're willing. You're, you're ready to be obedient. Trust in him for the outcome. And the last question is for those in this place who would, who would honestly say, looking at your life, you would say, you know what? I'm not like Mary. Because I could not honestly say, like Mary did, I am the Lord's servant. Maybe you've never given your life to him. You've never surrendered your sins. You've never accepted salvation. Or maybe you've had the opportunity to say all the right things, to pray a prayer, raise a hand, whatever it might be, but you've never truly lived it out. But today you would say, you know what, Pastor Scott, I want to take the leap of faith today. I'm going to trust God with the outcome. I don't really uh, completely understand how eternity works, but I want to be obedient to the process of giving my life to Jesus Christ. I want to admit of my sins. I want to believe in him, and I want to confess him as Lord. How many would say in this place today, I want Jesus to have my entire life? Just a simple raise of hands. I need Jesus in my life. Yeah, I see hands all over. One, two, three. Anybody else? Four. Anybody else? Five. Anybody else? You just, I, I want God to be the Lord of my life. I see up in the balcony, six hands. Anybody else? Seven out there in the back. Seven people today, church, say, I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. I want from here on out my eternal perspective to be different. I don't fully understand it, but I know God's got something in store for me. Church, what we're going to do, and, and you can look up back at me. What we're going to do is we're going to just sing a song, I, I surrender all. And whether you're saying, I, I want to surrender everything, my life, I want to be saved. I, I surrender my life to him, salvation. That can be your heart's cry and your pr prayer. Or maybe you're saying this place, God is asking me, he's inviting me to do something different. I surrender to his plan. I'm going to be obedient to him. And it's just going to be a moment for us to pray and ask God to divinely show up into our life, to lead us, to guide us, to shape us, to change us. And we're going to sing this song together as a congregation, but also we have these prayer teams down here. If you need prayer in your life today, maybe you raised your hand and said, I want salvation. Can I tell you, these individuals, you can come up here and they can just lead you through the ABCs of salvation. They can lead you through that prayer that just simply says, God, I die to myself and I ask for you to come and live inside of me. Maybe you're in this place and God is asking you to take a step of faith and you just need some courage. Can I tell you, prayer can give you the courage to do what God asks you to, asks you to do. Maybe you're in this place and you've got just a prayer request. You're hurting, you're pain, you got, uh, you got stuff going on in your life, whatever it might look at, we're here to pray with you. But why don't we just take a moment as a congregation and take some time in worshiping him and spending his time with him in prayer. So I invite you, if you need prayer, to come up to the front. If not, I encourage you to just spend some time in your pew praying, worshiping, and praising God today. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to
Lord, we thank you that you are a God who interrupts us. You are a God that cares enough about us to see where we're at and see where we could be. And you don't want us to just be comfortable on this earth. You want us to be victorious on this earth. You want us to be used and live life with a purpose here on this earth. And so we thank you, Lord, that you care enough about us to interrupt our status quo to interrupt our comfort zones. And I pray, holy God, that more than ever before, moving forward, we will be a people, we will be a church that is constantly having divine interruptions in our life. Lead us every single day, Lord. Now, we're not just looking for big life interruptions, but the daily interruptions to where you invite us. Hey, go pray for that person. Hey, go be obedient here. Hey, just give that person a few bucks. Help that person out. God, Open up our hearts, open up our spirits to what you want to do in and through us daily, Lord. We invite you in. Lord, you are Lord of our life. We are your servants. And we say, what you want, we will do. And even when it seems impossible, we will trust that your ways are higher than our ways. And we might not see how it's going to take place, but you are a God whom nothing is impossible for. So, Lord, we invite you in and we say, everything that we have is yours. Do with us what you want. We love you, God. I pray that you will be with us as we leave this place. Watch over us. Protect us. We know many are going to be traveling, whether through plane or through car, just with the Christmas season. I pray for your hedge of protection upon each and every individual in this place. Watch over our families. Keep us safe. Keep us healthy. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, amen and amen. Well, God bless you as you leave this place. 